How's everybody doing this morning? Y'all awake yet? I think we have this problem with everybody sleeping in a little late because we're not used to this. So how's everybody doing this morning? All right. Everybody ready to uh, get your Jesus on? Okay. Good. So if you're a visitor with us this morning, I uh, appreciate y'all being here with us. Thank you for coming. There's a little visitor card in the back of the pews. If you'll fill that out and turn it into our welcome center. If you go out these two double doors here to the left, my left in the back, and take a left, there's a little welcome center. If you'll turn that card in, they'll have a little gift for you. But uh, we do appreciate you being here with us. Right now, it's our tithing and our offering portion of the service. So uh, I want to start off with uh, a, verse, a couple of verses in Hebrews uh, 12, 28, and 29. It says, Therefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. You know, uh, God never intended our salvation to be a spectator sport. Like, just to sit back and like, you ever heard of an armchair quarterback? Like, you know, you're watching your favorite team play football and you're like, nope, shouldn't have done that. Yep, nope, 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 that's not how you do it. No, you need to throw it a little bit straighter and a little bit more spiral and throw it a little deeper. And, you know, you're trying to, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of Bible scholar, armchair Bible scholars, right? They know a lot about the Bible. They know a lot about the Bible. They don't really practice it, though. You know who knows a lot about the Bible? The devil, right? And even him, he, he, so he doesn't do a real good job of practicing the Bible, right? So um, not a spectator sport. Also a lot of couch potato Christians and a lot of worship observers, right? So um, not a spectator sport, though, right? We're all supposed to get involved in many different ways. Um, praising God, worshiping God, serving God, giving to God is another way that we can uh, not be one of those armchair Christians or, or whatever you want to call them. Now, giving is um, a way that we can give back in so many different ways. And yes, money is one of them. Our tithes and our offering is, is one of them. It's not the only way, but it is a way and it is a way that is called for in the Bible to give back. The first of what we receive, we're supposed to give as our tithes, right? And then everything else that God lays on our heart after that is an offering. So here's the problem is, and we talked about being connected to God in Sunday school. If you're not connected to God, you're not going to know what to give. The 10% should be automatic, right? But what about over and above that? You know, we are so privileged in America I don't care about the coronavirus. We're privileged, right? We're privileged. We get to come to church. There's a lot of places that aren't that you know, have that privilege. We can worship God freely. That privilege is trying to be taken away from us, but there's a lot of places where that, that privilege, they don't have it, right? We're privileged to be able to serve God just period. There's so many privileges, and I think that we take advantage of those, uh, and we don't, we, don't take, we don't take advantage of those enough of those privileges that we have and giving is one of those privileges God has allowed us to have and here's the thing is God just doesn't say give and he says give and it will be given back to you you earn trust with God when you give right and he'll give you more to give out to people and, and more if you see people who are super successful right that, that are Christians that are super successful and you're like oh, well they should be giving more money to God they probably do. That's why they got so much more. So if you want to be like them, I don't know. I think you should probably pray about it a little bit more. But listen, it is an absolute privilege to be able to, whether it's an usher coming through here, which we're not doing, it's a, it's a privilege to walk up to one of these little blue boxes and put your offering and your tithes in right there. It is an absolute privilege. So don't, don't, don't not take advantage of the privilege of giving to God. All right, so as a reminder, I said it, there's blue boxes on the corners by the door. These are the same doors that you can exit by if you want to. Um, but when the service is over, if you haven't already had the opportunity to give, please drop your tithes and your offerings off in those boxes and you will be blessed for, for, because of it. So if everybody right now can stand, we will go ahead and we'll bless the offering that's going to be uh, taken up. If you'll point your hands this way, Father, we love you this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to serve you and the opportunity to give back to you, God, what you've already given to us. 
And God, we ask that you would anoint it and that you would bless it and that you would use it mightily, Father God, to build your kingdom, God. This morning we ask that you would just be in this service, Lord, that you'll be with everybody who's singing a, singing a song or playing an instrument with our praise team, with, with everybody out in the crowd, Lord, that's honoring you and worshiping you, God, that you'll just let your spirit be ushered in, Father God. And Father, we ask that you would be with our pastor this morning, Lord, as, as he brings us your word, God, that you would just let it be what you've planned it to be and let every word that he says come straight from your throne room, Lord. We love you and thank you for all you do in your name. Amen. Just a few announcements. Please remember Thursdays we have prayer meeting and everybody is welcome. It's at 10 a.m. in the morning here at the church. Um, it's, if at all you can come to that, uh, you are more than welcome. Sunday nights, an hour before service, so 5 o'clock, and an hour before service on Wednesday nights, which would be 6 o'clock. There's also a prayer meeting uh, back in the Sam's Club room. Uh, and don't worry about social distancing. They, they will do that. We're, when you pray, you just get your own little six feet away from everybody and, and pray. And then the last thing I have is um, Rural King is having what they call uh, Church Week. And uh, so it's August the 2nd through August 15th, which is, I guess, weeks. Um, and it is a program to where if you purchase something at Royal King, you can go uh, onto their website and register what you purchase, and uh, Royal King will donate 10% of your valid Royal King receipts um, total after taxes um, to the church of, that you register for. So um, all donations will be provided by September 15th, 2020. So um, if you have more information, there's, I got this little sheet. Um, and Sharon gave it to me. I don't know if it's hung up somewhere. Well, I guess we can hang it up. But uh, it's a good thing. Uh, so if you at all shop at Royal King already, then you can help support the church and turn in those receipts. Again, those dates are August 2nd through August 15th. And uh, if you want to, I'll have this sheet. I'll let you read it if you want to read it, if you want some more information. But um, that is all the announcements I have. You guys look fantastic, and I hope you all are ready to praise and worship God. Let's 
up your love and you would wage a war try to take the very thing you gave your life for and you would come running and tear down every wall oh, all the while you're shouting oh my
Thank him for his love for us. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you, God, that you haven't given up on us. Lord, that your love doesn't fall short. Lord, that it doesn't walk out when things get tough. But Lord, that you remain the same. And whether we make our bed, In the heavens above, or we make our bed. God, in places that you don't want us to be, that you never stop, that your love never stops, that you be with us. God, you promised us that you would be with us. Even when we don't choose you. Oh. 
Regardless of the condition of our circumstances, Lord, we stand on the promise, God, of your love. We stand on the promise, Lord, of your faithfulness. We stand on the promise that you will be there regardless of us. We ask, Lord, that you would just remind us today. Help us to remember, God, who you are. Help us to remember your love. Help us to remember, Lord, all the times that you've been faithful, all the times that you've come through for us on our behalf, Lord. I ask that you, Father God, would just arrest our hearts today, arrest our minds today. Lord, that we would get our attention and our mindset off of the things that are going wrong, off of the things of this world, off of the things that have us looking down. Lord, that we would lift our eyes to the heavens where our help comes from. We praise you and we thank you for it. We ask that your anointing, Lord, that it would be here, that it would continue here. That every word that is spoken, God, that it would be straight from you. Lord, that it wouldn't be based on man's opinion or thoughts or ideas, Lord, but that it would be based on the truth of your word and what, and what you have said and what you have declared. We honor you today, Lord. We honor you today because of who you are. We honor you today because, not just because of what you've done, but because of who you are. And we praise you. We thank you in Jesus' name. And let's give the Lord some praise because he deserves it. He's earned it. Come on, guys. You can do better than that. Let's lift up the throne. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Man, it's so good to see you guys here in the house of the Lord this morning. I appreciate each of you coming. God's presence is in the house, and I'm so excited about that. I appreciate that presence of the Lord. It's good this morning to have Kim and Ed Hardy with us this morning. appreciate them coming and being with us. They were with us last Sunday out in the heat, and I uh, appreciate them setting out in the heat and being here and coming back this morning. I want to go before the Lord in prayer just before the message this morning. I want to continue to pray for the Wyatt family. Let's ask God to continue to touch each of them. We uh, buried their mother this, uh, this past Thursday, had the funeral here at the church. And while we're talking about that, if any of you guys would like to help Miss Wanda didn't have a life insurance policy, and if anyone would like to help, if you want to write your check out to the church and put Wyatt family uh, funeral expenses or anything like that on it, anything would be appreciated. My wife and I are going to help, and uh, we welcome you to do so as well. And you say, Brother Dale, why do I need to make it out to the church? Well, you don't have to. You can make it out to Memorial Funeral Home, but if you make it out to the church, it's tax deductible, and we'll put it on your uh, tax papers as they come out at the end of the year if you'd like to do that. So that's just something making available to you. Les Brady is having surgery tomorrow, and I had a uh, phone call from a Miss Judy Enlow. Her and her mother uh, have been to our church several times. Both of them are going through some serious health problems and have asked the church to pray for them. So we're going to do that. If I didn't mention you this morning as visiting, I just didn't get an opportunity to get your name. So thank you so much for those of you that are here, that are visiting. I see our crowd is spread out quite largely. And for those of you that are hailing us from Facebook this morning, we welcome you. We pray that God is ministering to you, that He is rewarding and blessing you. For those of you who are wearing your mask here in the congregation, we thank you. Uh, the CDC tells us that's a good thing to do. We're recommending it, not mandating it. We have them available. If anybody needs one, uh, we make that available to you. We are praising God here. I, I hope that you are at your home, but especially here at Rio East, we're praising God that not one 
person that we're aware of has been positive in the Rio East Church. None of our church extended families that we're aware of have been positive for this thing. I know that some of you have come in contact with people that were positive and you went the 14, 15 days to get your release and God helped you to be negative and we're praising the Lord for that and thanking God for that. He's on the throne and whether you believe the worst about this thing or whether you believe it's just hyped up and hopped up by politicians, that doesn't really matter to me. What really matters is that you trust in God. I'm still believing that He keeps the plagues away from my dwelling. I'm still claiming that He rebukes the devourer for a tither's sake. I still believe that God is able and available to touch your home and to minister to your life in everything that you have need of. Brother DJ will be ministering in the service tonight. DJ, we're looking forward to that service. We will not have our youth choir tonight, even though this is youth, uh, our youth praise team, sorry. Uh, even though this is Youth Sunday, we will be having a few extras from the youth department, but they have not, due to this garbage, not been able to practice, not been able to get together. So uh, I'd rather they didn't practice on us. Hallelujah. I'd rather they have a little practice time before they, before they get up. So we're looking forward to the service tonight. Wednesday night, if you're a part of the Driven, those of you that are a part of the Driven or if you're of Driven age, would you stand up, please? Those of you that are in the Driven group, Pastor Jason and, and uh, Pastor Joy uh, are uh, heading up the Driven group. This group that you see standing here are uh, somewhere between, Jason likes to call it, 18 to 30-something-ish, and maybe even 40-something-ish. If you feel good, we're not, uh, we're not just... Uh, 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 truant officers around here so we don't pretty too much push on age but what I'm going to say is this group is ministering outside the walls on Wednesday they have rented the pavilion at Sandy Springs Park for the next three weeks last week was the first they rented it for a month Last week being the first, they had over 50 people there. A lot of the community was coming around and listening to the worship. They said some people were uh, taking videos and doing that kind of thing. So we're, uh, th this group is trying to get outside the walls. And if you want to join that, see Jason or Joy, if you don't know where it is, if you're visiting, you're welcome to do that. Let's give them a hand. You guys can be seated. Thank you so much for that. And if you're a part of the other groups, we will not be having children's classes downstairs this Wednesday. We're looking at this week at a time. We're trying to be safe. Our children's church is meeting this morning in the fellowship hall. They are distancing. They're having a back-to-school bash down there, having lessons and doing the whole thing, but they're staying apart as much as possible. We're trying to keep these kids from being really, really close. But uh, on Wednesday night, those of you that are adults that are of the uh, older age or maybe you like to come in the sanctuary class, uh, we will be having an awesome celebration in here on Wednesday night. Uh, this young lady right here is going to be uh, singing for us this coming Wednesday. Your, your music came in, right? Okay, the music is here. Everybody's good to go. The devil's been trying to keep her hard from ministering, but it's all here and she's good to go. Brother Gerald Claybo will be preaching. And uh, let's see, uh, Tanya Latham, Lath not Latham, Tanya Tanner will be doing the testimony. So I get names rumbling up here in my mind and everything going around crazy. So Wednesday night, if you can, make that available to yourself. Let's go before the Lord in prayer right now. Just stay seated where you are. We want to welcome the Holy Spirit this morning to come. Father, we thank you so much that you're already amongst us. You said where two or three were gathered together that you would be there. And I want to thank you that you're right here this morning. I feel your presence. I know your touch. I know that you're here touching hearts. And Lord, we so need you. Lord, thank you for that song that helps us to realize that from your scripture, we can't get away from your love. Lord, your love is higher than any mountain. Your love is deeper than any ocean. God, you're always there. You're always with us, caring for us. No sin 
is any greater. God, no sin goes on farther beyond where your love is not able to reach and touch and heal and forgive and bring forth peace and security in our hearts. Lord, we love you and need you. And as we stand once again before your people, God, we're asking that every word that's spoken minister to every heart. And we're asking that you open the hearts of your people. God, that they'll receive exactly what you have for them today. Lord, let every heart be receptive and let the words go deep as seeds into our soul and let them produce a great fruit. We love you so much and we need you, Father. And we ask you in Jesus' name, minister as only you can minister. And the church shouted, Amen. Amen. Once again, let me welcome those of you that are on Facebook this morning. We thank you for tuning in. Those of you in South America, some of our friends there that are listening, those of you that are down in Florida and listening, those of you that are on vacation, we welcome you and we ask that God minister to you and your families. If you have your Bible with you this morning, uh, turn with us in the Word of the Lord to the Old Testament book of Genesis. It's pretty easy to find that Old Testament book if you just open it up just a little past the cover and just a little past the introduction there or the page of contents, you will find the book of Genesis beginning. We're looking at chapter number 19, chapter number 19. I'm preaching this morning on fatal attraction, fatal attraction. If we're ever in a day, I believe the day is today, that our world is interested in things that are attractive. People want to see things that are good. People want to watch things that appease the flesh. People want to be involved in things that bring fleshly pleasure. If we're ever in a time, it's today that we need to wake up as a church and be very careful and very cautious of the things that get our attention. I want to take you a long ways back in history, way back in time this morning. I want to take you back prior to a time when God got fed up with sin, to a time where God decided that man had gone too far, if you will, in a particular area, and God decided that He was going to bring judgment upon a city. But I want to show you the mercy of God. And Joy, you guys did a wonderful job with those songs this morning. They really ministered to our hearts, and the love of God is absolutely amazing. And I want you to know this morning, no matter where you are in your life, if you'll turn to God just before the judgment of God falls, you can turn to God as well. But I also want you to understand that God comes to a place in life. God comes to a place in every heart where you've gone beyond the line, where you've gone beyond the place where you can repent. How do you know that, Brother Dale? Because the Word of God says that God's Spirit will not always strive with man. There comes a time where you can outdo, if you will, your time of forgiveness. And I'm not trying to preach a strange message to you this morning. I'm simply trying to tell you that even if you go beyond the line where God's judgment falls, God's love is still right there. David said, though I make my bed in hell, thou art there. You're still there. The love of God is continually ministering to man. And I know that it's a, a great thing to preach a love message. And I, I want every message that I preach to be preached out of love. And, and you to understand that the love of God is always encompassing and always available. But I want you to understand that God also is a God that will only put up with so much. You say, Brother Dale, I can go until the very last breath in my body before I exhaust the love of God. I wouldn't gamble on that. You say, how do you know, Brother Dale? Because I have Scripture to prove it. I don't preach anything that's not in this book. But if it's in this book, I must preach it. This may, Brother Gerald, be a sobering, sobering message this morning. But out of this sobering message, I want us to understand that God is looking at the church today in this time of trouble, in this time of encroaching darkness. God is looking at the church today 
to bring a light. God is looking at the church today to look to Him, the author and the finisher of our faith. God is looking at the church today to get our eyes fixed on Him. So let's go back in Genesis. If you go back to chapter 18 and the first part of chapter 19, you'll find that God comes down. He comes walking with a couple of angels and He walks up to the camp of Abraham. And I'm not going to read all of that. I'm just giving you some history. But as he walks up to the camp of Abraham, he spends a little time with Abraham, and Abraham makes a sacrifice to God, and they have some communion there. And Abraham and God, they begin to part ways, and God and the angels begin to go on about doing what they came to this earth to do. And God says, I believe I need to tell my servant, and I'm paraphrasing, but it's there, you can read it. I believe I need to tell my servant what I came to do. And he said, the cries of wickedness come rising from Sodom. You say, oh no, Brother Dale, we don't want to hear that today. This is a message that's where we are today as a world. I'm not picking on just the United States of America, but I'm talking about the world in a whole. Within the last ten years, this world has got more worldly-minded than any ten-year segment of time that we can read about in history back to the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. You said, Brother Dale, why are you going all the way back there? Because the Lord has instructed that we need to read and we need to study and we need to take a lesson from the city of Sodom and Gomorrah this morning. I want you to understand that God loves you, that He cares for you, and that this message is a warning to each of you. Those of you that are listening on Facebook, many of you are getting caught up in the times that we're living in. Many of you are getting caught up in the comfort of your couch. And please don't misunderstand me. If you're leery about this virus, we've often told you, you need to stay home. You need to follow your heart. You need to follow what God places on the inside of your spirit. And don't listen at this as a reprimand or a challenge to you unless God sends it that way to your heart. But I'm worried about people who, yes, they are cautious. They are careful about going to church. They are very cautious about coming to the house of God. Won't even get in their automobile and come and sit in the parking lot when we offer that opportunity. But yet they go to Walmart and they walk in Walmart and they go out to eat and they enjoy a steak in the steakhouse. What are you saying, Brother Dale? I'm saying be very careful, people. The devil is on the prowl and he's trying so hard to convince people that this thing is going to kill you. Guess what? You're going to die. You're going to die. Brother Dale, I could have went all day without hearing that. It's because of the love of God that you're going to die. Because the Bible says that God loves <laughs> the day that His saints go home. God loves. So I want to get back to the message quickly before I get off on a rabbit trail this morning. Abraham came and talked to God and he said, If you can... And he told Abraham, he said, That smell of sin, that stench of the condition of man's heart has come up as a report, as a reproach, unto me and I don't know the exact wording that God spoke to Abraham all we have is the written word that has been written down I don't know all the, 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 the adjectives maybe that God used I don't know what all was told to Abraham but I know Abraham went to battle brother Derek and Abraham knew that his nephew Lot and Lot's family was living there in Sodom and Abraham began to go into battle. He began to go and petition God. And he, he began to say, God, God, 
If I can find 50 people, will you spare the city? God, will you please spare the city? And we see the love of God. We see the love of God. And God said, if 50 people are found in the whole city that are righteous, I will. I'll spare the city. And they looked, and there weren't 50. And he came on down, and he came on down, and he came on down. There were not 10 in the city that were righteous. And I'm going to come on down and break it down a little further for you. Lot wasn't righteous. His wife wasn't righteous. His daughters were not righteous. But because a man stood in behalf of his family. Church, I'm wondering, are you standing in behalf of your family today? This is not necessarily the theme of what I'm preaching on, but it's a good place to say, if we have nothing else to do whatsoever... We should be crying out to God, God, spare my kids. God, spare my loved ones. God, spare my nieces and nephews. God, spare my church. God, touch our people. God, if you can find a thousand righteous in the United States, will you spare her? It's quiet in here this morning. When the morning dawned, God couldn't find righteous. He couldn't find any righteous in the city of Sodom. They just were not there. But Abraham prayed, Brother Gerald, and God, God rescued because of Abraham's prayers. When the morning dawned, Genesis 19, 15, when the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry. The decision has been made. The destruction is coming. The preparations in the heavens were already getting ready to happen. <laughs> Brother Robert, I was studying this week and I was thinking, you know, God didn't snap His fingers and throw fire into Sodom. But God had a process happening. I read a research report that said that they found fragments and that meteorites hit that place and exploded it in fire and sulfur, began to blow up all over the place. And, and that report that I read said something, you know, had to line up. God was already in the process. But listen to me. Satan has already got something in the process for each of you. Those of you that are listening to me, Satan has got a plan lined up for you. But God, if you'll just surrender. But God, if you'll just cry out to Him. But God, if you'll just turn your heart, will stop the process that Satan has in mind for you. There's a calamity coming to your house. But God wants to stop it. He said, I know the thoughts that I think of you. They're good thoughts. They're thoughts to bless you, to help you to have an expected end. You say, Brother Dale, does that stop all the calamity? No, it doesn't stop them all. But it helps you to understand that the love of God is greater than any of them. The love of God goes deeper than any fault. Any problem? When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. Verse 16, And while he lingered, does that sound like the church to you today? My God, I wept as I prepared this, and I said, God, this is where we are today. The church is lingering. We're praying for revival. We're asking the Lord, send a mighty move. We make it as comfortable as we can, and people still don't get in on the revival. You say, Brother Dale, it's all because of COVID. No, it's not. Last year, we sought a revival from God 
and the seats were sparsely populated. The church of the living God has an attraction to something other than God. Are you hearing me? I'm saying the church of the living God needs a revival. We need to wake up and say, God is my God. We're getting too attached to the comfort and the things of this world. We're getting too attached to the 52-inch than we are to these two knees that get down before God and say, God, spare my family, spare my home, spare my life, O oh God. I plead your mercy, Lord. He said, Brother Dale, this is too hard to swallow. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand. You see it. It's on the board. You can read it for yourself. They took hold of his hand. Who else did they get a hold of? They got a hold of his wife's hand and the hands of his two daughters. The Lord being merciful to him. My God, that mercy is available to every one of us. I know that we're saying that we must preach a love message today to get anybody saved, but listen to me. There is the love of God. It's by His love, it's by His goodness that we're begotten. It's because He cares. If He didn't care, we'd already, all of us went up in smoke. But God loves us, and God cares for us. And there's such a spirit going around today that says, Brother Dale, you're just too fanatic. It's been this way ever since man began. And it keeps keeping on. Nothing's going to happen. Something's happening. The church is disassociating with the presence and with the power. Read an article just this week. Certain, certain denomination have published in their flyer, their church flyer. If anyone gets over exuberant in the church, the leaders are to get them by the arms and take them to a spare room. That wasn't in California. That was in Tennessee. Take them to a spare room. If they get too excited, take them to a spare room. Just heard this week in the city... Uh, I won't name the city, but in California, I'm told that they are demanded and ordered to stop having house church. Really? The Lord's merciful. And the hands of His two daughters, the Lord being merciful. And they brought Him out and set Him outside the city. Say that with me. Out, outside the city. So it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said, this is the Lord speaking, escape for your life. Let me feel some things in here. The Lord's saying, I delivered you. The Lord's saying, I brought you out from there. You didn't deserve it, but I brought you. There's not a one of us that deserve it this morning, Gerald. Not a one of us. Some of you have been saved for 50 years. And now you're beginning to wonder your salvation. You're beginning to wonder, am I really saved or am I not saved? Some of you, the devil's beginning to talk to you. Some of you are beginning to think, hey, I don't really need church. It's just a bunch of hypocrites anyhow. We're all trying to get to the same place. So you get there the way you can. I'll get there the way I can. The devil's doing everything that he can. He's working all day. He's working all night. He's had a lot of practice. But I'm asking you, are you ready for this last day falling away? Will you be a part of the redeemed? Will you be a part of those? Will you be righteous? You say, Brother Dale, I can't be righteous. Oh, yes, you can. You can plead the mercy of God and by His stripes, by faith in Him, you are the righteousness of God. So it came to pass when they had brought them outside that He said, Escape for your life. Don't look behind you nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape 
to the mountains lest you be destroyed. Jumping on down, Sodom was a very appealing place. And in verse number 26 of chapter 19, his wife looked back behind him and she became a pillar of salt. His wife looked back. She looked back. Why did she look back? Because Sodom was a very appealing place. I came to tell you that especially those of us in the United States, we have been given an appealing place to live. Satan has seen to it that we have our toys and that we spend time having fun. If we get sick, we've got a doctor. It's easy. Pick up the phone. It's so much easier now. COVID has made it so easy just to even see the doctor. You say, Brother Dale, are you preaching against the heavens? No, I'm talking about ease. I get so excited sometimes and my weight is such that I have to take a blood pressure pill. I'm praying I'll get off of that, Brother Gerald. But it comes time for a renewal of my pressure medicine. I thought, I guess I better continue that stuff. And the pharmacy, I get them nine month, I mean, uh, three months supplies, 90 days supplies. They call me, they say, you have to go back to the doctor, your prescription's over. I said, okay. I called the doctor for an appointment. The doctor said, okay, here's time for your appointment. Meet us on, fa- uh, on, on, on the smartphone. Easy. What'd you call it? Tell a what? Telehealth. Telehealth. Well, time came. I was sitting down there in my office at church here. And the time came for the appointment. They give me numbers to tune in. I tuned in. And there's my doctor on my screen. He said, where are you at, preacher? I said, I'm in my office. He said, well, that's the clearest picture that I've had with anybody. I said, well, thank you. I know you're wanting my money. So it was easy. What are you saying, Brother Dale? I'm saying we don't have any stress to have to go through to even go to the doctor. It's easy. You don't have to pray about your blood pressure anymore. Just go get you a couple pills. Keep eating the sweet potatoes and and, and bread like I'm doing and just keep it going and get you another pill. It's easy. Life is easy today. You say, Brother Dale, you ain't living where I am. No, you haven't been somewhere where it's not easy because we have the conveniences and Satan has made sure that we began to get relying on those easy things. It's attractive. Sodom was an attractive place. A close investigation of the city of Sodom reveals that it was a bustling place, a city filled with energy and excitement. It was a place that came alive when the sun went down. If you study about it in chapter 8 and chapter 9, you will find out just exactly how wicked that Sodom was. In Sodom, diversity was the watchword for the day. Does it sound familiar to you? Their lifestyles were diverse. They encouraged all kinds of lewd and immoral behavior, especially homosexuality. Men were sleeping with women, I mean with men. Men were sleeping with men and women were sleeping with women. They had even gotten the animals of the city involved in their lewd behavior. You say, Brother Dale, that's trash talk. No, that's Scripture. That's where we are today. But little did they know that the Sodomites had gotten God's attention and He had had enough. You see, God has a system. He'll let you go so far and then God has enough. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. God is getting ready to push the button to punish them to punish them for their pride their indifference and their disobedience the part of the story that really bothers me is the fact that 
This was a place that captivated Lot's attention. The Bible says that Lot pitched his tent toward Sodom. I don't think he was an evil person. I believe he got caught up in the lust of Sodom. And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan. This is found in Genesis 13 and 10. He saw all the plains of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as you go toward Zoar. Then Lot chose for himself all the plains of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. And they separated from each other, Lot and Abraham. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain. And he pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. Why did he do that? He did that because there was an attraction there, a fatal attraction there. Each of us have things that attract us that we must turn off. Each of us have things that pull us that are not godly that we must separate ourselves from. As long as we stay close to God, as long as we pray and listen to His Word, God will show us those things and help us to steer away from them. But when we get out of the presence of God, when we stop coming to church, when we stop spending time with Him, when we stop reading His Word, those things become attractions that pull us and before long they become sticky to us and then before long we move in to the city Lot didn't live there initially he lived on a hill overlooking the city but eventually everybody say it with me eventually eventually the allure of the city the lights of the city the sounds of the city the crowds of the city they captivated Lot's attention and he drew, they drew him into the city. Now watch him. Lot moved from his tent outside the city to a house on one of the main streets of the city. He raised his family there. His daughters went to Sodom High School. His wife joined the Sodom Women's Garden Club. He became a man of influence there. His family fell in love with that city. And the saddest part about it all was he was fully aware of the things that were going on around him. He was fully aware of the reputation of the city. But he failed to see that judgment was on its way that day. He failed to see that. Verse 15. When the morning dawned, the angels urged him, Hurry, they said, Rise, take your wife and your daughter's who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. But look again at the first part of verse 16, what it says. But he what? He lingered. He didn't move. He lingered. He didn't get in a hurry. He hung around. He lingered right there in Sodom. In Sodom, in that corruptible, detestable place, he lingered. And somebody today is lingering when they ought to be fleeing. What has God told you to leave behind? What has God told you to get away from this morning? I'm challenging you. Please don't linger too long. Please don't look at that attraction too long. Please don't get too comfortable where you are. Please don't get so attached to this planet earth that you don't want to leave. Because somebody was praying, God delivered Lot. While he lingered, God took him by the hand and his whole family. They were blessed by association. They didn't want to get out of Sodom. They didn't want to get out. They didn't deserve to get out. They didn't really believe that destruction was coming. They were forced out because of Abraham's intervention. The Bible says in verse 19, Because of magnified mercy, God saved Lot and his family. You know the story. Sot became, Sodom became a literal hell on earth. But Lot and his family were safe outside the city because of Abraham's prayers and God's mercy. 
Can I tell you this morning, wherever you are, God can bring you out. Would you guys come on up? God can bring you out wherever you are. Is there anybody here this morning that could testify that God brought you out? Is there anybody here that God brought you out? You are headed for destruction, but God, but God brought you out. You used to get high on dope, but now you get high on God. You used to fall down drunk, but now you fall out in the Spirit. You used to fuss and fight, but now you pray and praise. God can snatch you out, but you can't look back. Stop lingering today. And let's go. Every moment is critical. Fatal attraction says just once more. Just once more. Just once more. But you don't understand my job. It demands so much time. But you don't understand my family. We never get to spend any time together. But you don't understand my workers, my co-workers. If I hammered them about church, they wouldn't have anything to do with me. You don't understand, preacher. You're living in a different world. God can bring you out. He brought out Lot's family. They didn't deserve it. They didn't even ask for it. But some family member was praying. Have you got anybody in your family that needs to be brought out? Maybe there's somebody here today that you need to be brought out. You've been consumed. You're attached to this world. Maybe you're on Facebook and, and, and the enemy has consumed you. And you're not listening to God anymore. You're not listening to the ways of the Lord anymore. You're listening to the world and fear has crept in. Just once more. Lot's wife, we don't even know her name. She was just Lot's wife. She was delivered. Isn't that amazing? She was delivered. You say, Brother Dale. Do you believe in once in grace, always in grace? I do. The love of God never leaves you. But I believe you can leave the love of God. I believe Lot's wife is an example of that. See, it goes all the way back in the Old Testament. You say, Brother Dale, that's an Old Testament story. Yeah, but I'm going to bring you into the New Testament here just in a moment and prove it to you. She was delivered. She was living in the middle of Sodom and she loved it. She was there, raised her daughters there. Loved the city. Loved the leeks and onions as the Israelites got accustomed to that in Egypt. She loved it. But God spared her, Derek, and brought her out and set her in freedom outside the city completely free from Sodom all she had to do was look forward don't look back Miss Lot look forward but the lure was so strong the appeal the attachment was so strong just one more glance just one more look just one more passionate kiss. Just one more hit. Just one more time staying out of church. Just one more time not going to prayer when you know God's call. Just one more time. And then as you neglect God, that attachment and that desire and that attraction to the world and the things of the world gets stronger and stronger. I'm not here to judge you folks. Y'all are looking at me like I'm a, some kind of a wicked judge. I'm here to love you 
and to tell you that God is sending mercy to tell you that I'm the watchman on the wall for your soul and some of you are playing a dangerous game you say brother Dale it's none of us here it's all those on Facebook okay Facebook some of you all are playing a dangerous game Satan's got your number he's not a new character at this game he's been at it a long time he consumed those in Sodom and Gomorrah. He got them so attached to their own lewd behavior. He got them so having so much fun. It was always a party. Always a big party. But God had enough. And I'm wondering how many babies has to be killed. I'm wondering how many churches has to be burned. I'm wondering how many organizations and crazy groups has to be put together here in the United States for God to say, I'm done. You say, Brother Dale, I'm a Christian. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. I'm saved. I, I know I am. Thank God you're exactly right. God said that you're not appointed to wrath. If you're a Christian, if you're living for the Lord, you don't have any of that stuff to worry about. But do you have any family members that may have a problem? God's trying to get the church's attention. He's trying to say, wake up! He's not going to shake his head and wink at sin. Forever, Brother Stacy. He's not going to continue forever. There has to be a reckoning. Billy Graham, many years ago, stood in front of an audience in California. He said, ladies and gentlemen, if God does not judge America, He'll have to stand and apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. It's quiet in here this morning. There's a way to escape judgment. It's called coming to Jesus. But we're living in a day of one more time, one more attraction, one more desire, one more time, Brother Dale, one last look, one last thought. She was saved. You say, Brother Dale, that's a bold statement you've got up there. She was delivered completely, but damned eternally. Pastor, how can you make that statement? Well, let's just look at her. I'm not judging her this morning. I'm giving you facts. Number one, she didn't believe the angels. So therefore, she didn't believe God. Number two, she didn't take the Word of God when He said, don't turn around, no matter what you do. And number three, when she turned around, her physical body became a pillar of salt. And I'm telling you now what my spirit feels within me. It's not in the Word of God. But I believe her soul went to hell. She refused the salvation that was coming from Abraham. Say, Brother Dale, how could salvation come from Abraham? He offered her. He prayed for her. He delivered her. Abraham was standing as Christ stands today. He, being the forerunner of Christ, stood in the place of Christ as a go-between, Brother Gerald. Jesus is standing today as a go-between. Satan wants to destroy you. He wants to send your soul to hell. Nothing would make him any happier. But there's mercy, and there's grace, and there's goodness found in God. 
say, Brother Dale, why didn't God send a great revival to sweep through Sodom and Gomorrah? Why didn't He send a revival the week before the fire fall? Because God knew the revival wouldn't be accepted. The revival over in Jonah's book was another story. Jonah didn't want to go preach to him because he knew, he knew that God had forgiven him. He knew there were a bunch of perverts. He knew that there was sin and wickedness in the city. And Jonah was praying. It was Jonah. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was Jonah. Hallelujah. Sometimes I get Jonah and Enoch mixed up and Noah. <laughs> but Jonah prayed, God, don't send me to Nineveh. God said, I've got a job for you in Nineveh. And he was swallowed by fish. You know the story. And finally, he went to Nineveh and he preached. And the whole city come to God. Why didn't God do that in Sodom and Gomorrah? The sin had already filled the cup. And the mercy stopped. One day, there's coming a day. The sin is going to fill the cup. And the only payment is death. But there's a Savior, Brother Ken Hall. Aren't you glad? There's a Savior that loves us. The mercy of God is walking through this place this morning. Some of you are attracted to so many things. I'm attracted to so much stuff. But I have to turn off the switch. I have to say no. No. Paul used it as a as an athlete, as he was getting ready for a race, and he said, we have to run this race. We have to persevere. We have to push. We have to train. We have to get ready. We have to do some sort of coming to church. I said some sort. What's it mean, Pastor? It means it ain't always easy to shut off your favorite program. It ain't always easy to get on your face and pray. If I came around to you this morning, how many of you, please don't nod or raise your hand or anything else, but if I came to you personally and I said, how many of you have spent an hour in prayer this week? How many could say? feel the pains of a hurting Savior. I feel the pains this morning of a God that's saying judgment's coming. The preparations are already being made. Preparations are happening in the heavens as we speak. I don't know where we are on the scale, but I know preparations are happening. I know meteors somewhere out there in the heavens have a trajectory of colliding with earth before very long. How can you say that, Brother Dale? Because in the Great Tribulation, that's happening. One of them's got a name called Wormwood. It's coming. And then we hear folk that say, Oh, Brother Dale, that's just, that's just you know, that's just fairy tale. That was just uh, Daniel and... Uh, John, just all mixed up and on a spiritual high. And some of us can sit through church and sleep. Brother Dale, are you mad at us? No, I'm mad at Satan. Our church needs to be running over with grace and love and peace and joy and reaching out to communities. And it's so hard to just get people to pray anymore. Pastor, that's old fashioned. It's old fashioned. Would you stand with me? She was, she was delivered completely, but damned eternally. How can you say that, Brother Dale? That's Old Testament. Jesus is going to remind us this morning. In the New Testament, Luke chapter 17. In Luke chapter 17, Jesus is giving us a scenario. 
And Jesus is speaking to His disciples and all of those that are listening. They had asked Him what it's going to look like in the end. And Jesus began to tell them, As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Lord, in the day of the coming of the Lord. And then He said, As it was in the days of Noah, and then He said, As it was in the days of Lot. Chapter 17. Verses 22 down through verse 32. Read it when you get time. Jesus said, As it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking and selling and buying and building. And they didn't know. But then in verse number 32, Brother Gerald, Brother Gerald God makes a startling three-word statement. I challenge you to go there. Three words. One of the shortest verses in the whole Word of God. In the New Testament, yes. Jesus said, Remember Lot's wife. Really? That's umpteen years ago, Brother Dale, between Lot's wife and Jesus. It's been umpteen years ago since Jesus and today. But God never changes. When sin fills the cup of indignation, when it sins before God and He says it's enough and the time is complete, it doesn't matter if you just bought a new Cadillac, it doesn't matter if you just had a new baby, it doesn't matter if you just got elected the king of Bourbon Street, it doesn't matter. When God says it's done, it'll be over. They're going to dim the lights. Somebody today is going to come to Jesus. Somebody today is going to be born again. Somebody today is going to come running to the mercy of God. If you're listening on Facebook, God loves you just as much as He loves those that are here. And His mercy is reaching out to you and the goodness and the mercy of God is available today. But one day will be your last day. Lot's wife had a meeting at the Garden Club at 2 p.m. She had another meeting at 5 p.m. at the Sewing Club. She was popular in Sodom. Allow my sanctified imagination to work a little bit here. They had a visitor early that morning. God came walking into town with His angels. Get out of town, Lot. Get your family. Get out of town. Lot said, I've got another business deal to take care of. I just bought a car and i got to make sure that it's tuned up. God, I got to make sure that I got my details all in order. I got to go down and check with the bank, make sure my funds are transferred. God, get out of town, Lot. Get out of town. Get your family together, Lot. There's judgment coming. Lot didn't believe it. His wife didn't believe it. His daughters didn't believe it. And God had to forcefully grab them by the hand, take them out of the city. Some of you, you've been forcefully drug out because of somebody's prayers. You need to make sure you don't look back. You, you need to make sure you don't head back in that direction behind you. I heard Stacy preaching the other night and he was talking about people that like to brag about their past life before Christ. How tough they were, how mean they were. That's a dangerous thing to brag about. Yes, I know God brought you from a lot, but don't look back. 
they're going to sing. It's 12, 16. But what if judgment came this evening? What if the church were raptured out of here? There's a CD here. It's in a red, red jacket. It says, in case of rapture, play this. I felt it necessary to record this a while back. Because if the rapture takes place, this church is going to be running over with people. You heard a little bit about God, but now you've been left behind. You don't have to be left behind. You don't have to be in the judgment of God. You see, judgment is coming. The seven-year tribulation, the Bible says, will be a time such as no other's ever been on the face of this earth. You don't have to live through that. You don't have to try to make it through that. Jesus said to pray that you be counted worthy. Jesus said that His judgment is not meant for His kids. Paraphrasing. They're going to sing right now. And I'm going to ask you to come to Jesus. To say, Brother Dale, you can't scare people to God. I'm not trying to. I'm trying to tell you a truth. I'm giving you a gospel promise. God loves you. He cares for you. He doesn't want you to be fatally attracted to this world. The example, the proofs in the pudding. Just as Lot's wife. Look back one more time. One day will be your last day. Your last chance. Will you come to Jesus? Will you come right now? Facebook friends, will you make a place? Maybe in your living room. Maybe pull over beside the road and maybe cry out to God right now for forgiveness and ask Him to help you to make sure that you're ready. Will you come right now? He's calling. Will you come? Say, Brother Dale, I don't want to come by myself. Get somebody by the hand and bring them with you. They'll come with you. Who's coming? God's calling. Young people, what are you looking at? Young people, what's got your attention? Older people, are you stuck? Are you stuck in your ways? God is calling. You don't have to be first. Somebody's already come. Who else is coming? Who else is coming? Is God pulling on your heart? Do you know that you're ready? Are you ready? Are you worried about it? God, help us. God, help us. Pray. God's dealing with people. Pray. God, touch our sons and daughters. God, touch our families, Lord. Touch our babies. God, help us. Who else is coming? How close are we? How close are you? All signs are pointing to the end. Here comes another. Are you coming? Here comes some more. Are you coming? Help us, God. If you don't want to come for yourself, if you're ready, is there somebody you want to come for? We're not going to get up in your face. We're not going to negate your social distancing if you decide. Come to Jesus if you desire. If you want to stand and pray for somebody. 
It's all I want It's all you are 